I'm Ioni Butler and I'm the founder of Uplifting Content. I've missed talking to you all. It's been two weeks since I last did a Facebook Live. I've been traveling to Italy and the UK, so we'll definitely do another one, another update with you soon and fill you in on what's been going on. Um, but before we get started with my guest today, I wanted to let you know that we've got a fantastic giveaway. Um, first of all, she's offering a session for Soma Dome, which we'll go into, and you can find the link for that in this post description. So if you're interested in entering, click on the link. Also, we've got links to tons of amazing giveaways that we've got on at the minute on the Uplifting Content website. So I've got the link to that. And we've recently started this little thing called Patreon, which is a way for people to support the creators and the companies and the organizations that they love. And so I've had tons of people reach out and say, you know, how do we get involved? How can we support? Um, and Patreon is a great way to do that. So there's different tiers. It starts at $1 a month, which is like 12 bucks a year. Um, and you get all sorts of different perks with the different tiers. So I've got the link for that in there if you want to check that out. So now the housekeeping stuff is out the way. Oh, and also, as always, say hi, tell us where you're from, ask us questions, say what you're thinking, get involved. It's, these are so much more fun when we're having a conversation rather than the two of us just talking. So don't be shy. So without further ado, my lovely guest today is a woman that I met when I was speaking at the FemQ Summit um, a few months ago. And we just... Uh, gelled for so many reasons and I'm so excited for her to share with you what she's created so without further ado it's Sarah Atia. hi how are you hi Ioni how are you I'm good I'm so good, good to see you too. again <laughs> you too you too we had a lovely little catch up a while back and so it's nice to chat again um, I'm a little bit jet lagged from being up till six in the morning but it's fine <laughs> I am too so don't worry about it oh cool cool oh. we can crash after this yeah. um so I love to start these conversations um just to have you share a little bit about yourself because I've also realized um what you're doing well I was going to say what you're doing now isn't quite what you started out doing but I guess there's probably elements of law in what you're doing perhaps but if you want to share your story with people that would be great um, okay, sure. Uh, thanks for asking. Um, my background really is uh, kind of diverse. I only ended up getting into law because I was interested in social justice. Um, mm. And but the so my background as it relates to Soma Dome and and sort of the this whole vision um, doesn't really make any sense because <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, none of it really makes any sense. So if you have any clues. <laughs> point me down the path. <laughs> no, um, I've always been just a seeker, I think is really the, the thread I would say is the, is the, is the common, um, thread if there is one. Mm. Um, and so in, in college and undergrad, I studied philosophy and rhetoric and religion and spent quite a bit of time in other countries traveling. And, um, I did some journalism work and, um, my first job out of college was actually teaching high school in South Central Los Angeles. So, um, I realized really, really quickly, it was, it was a big, uh, realization of, of sort of the discrepancies that exist in our, in our world and in this country mm -hmm. and in so many different ways. Um, and so that, that realization hit me in a really deep, uh, nerve. And I realized that part of what I wanted my path to be in this world was, um, to learn and understand and, and sort of go into the system, see how I could maybe make an impact. Um, and if not, or if, if it felt like it wasn't feasible from that angle, maybe do other things that could. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the, the vision for Soma Dome really came in to me. It, it sounds kind of crazy, but it came in a dream. Um, and I, and I didn't really understood what it, understand what it meant. And, um, it was just a very powerful sort of image that I got of a space that needed to exist in the world to, to give people access to self. So, um, but, but my journey and sort of what I've, what I've done, how I've come to terms with the, the goal of doing this and bringing it to fruition um, has been a really more a journey of self-discovery and um, understanding other cultures and understanding sort of the core of, of, of why we're all, I believe here, which is to ultimately, um, try to find ways to, to love each other and to see each other and um, sort of stop the division. And I think mm -hmm. we're going into a, a different state of consciousness, a different mm -hmm. time for the, for the world, for humanity. Um, so yeah, I have a lot of different um, perspectives on all of that. So 
which are always yeah. fun to talk about. I love those. Yeah, things. yeah, I, I know. Right? <laughs> I do. Um, so for people who might not know what the Soma Dome is, I was lucky enough to go a couple of weeks ago before I went away and have a session. Um, and it was fantastic. Like the minute I mm-hmm. sat in it, I just immediately felt relaxed just by sitting down. It's, it's beautiful. Um, so mm-hmm. for people that don't know, how do you, because I mean, you said you had the dream to create this space, but what does that look like? What is that for someone who doesn't know what Soma Dome is? It's basically just a space that's designed um, sort of as a sanctuary for the individual. Um, Mm. So it's comfortable and private and secluded and designed to be in any kind of an environment. So from um, an airport to a hotel lobby, to an office, to a spa, gym, um, and eventually homes as well. But really is a, a comfortable, easy to access space for the self where we can just go within and quiet the quiet the noise and try to just connect to ourselves, connect to our own inner voice. And, um, and then there are different aspects of what it does and how it's designed that I think contribute to um, the ultimate goal, which is to get more in alignment and to, you know, clear sort of our, our mind so that we can focus our intentions on the way we want our lives to be and sort Mm -hmm. of the person that we want to be more of, which is hard to achieve. (laughs) It really is. And so, you know, it is. I, I, cause I mean, I, I, I think meditation is incredible and so important, but I do find it difficult to, um, to focus. And what I really liked about the Soma Dome, so it's like a chair that you sit in and then sort of the lid comes over you and the effect that the lid has when it's on top of you, it's not like you're in a coffin. It's like you're in an infinity. It's like it, you're in infinity. Like I, I kept reaching up to touch the top of it. Cause I was like, where does this end? Like you know, it's, it's such a cool, trippy, strange thing. And the way that it's lit up inside is incredibly relaxing. And then you put headphones on and listen to music on binaural beats sort of, and there's all different sort of, things that you can be in there for Um, and I love it as a space that kind of helps you centered and focused and and quiet quiet down that noise which so many people so desperately need so I'm fascinated what I I'm I'm one that's all about um just just listening to that voice and um when we're given gifts of ideas sort of being receptive to, to that so I'm really fascinated by your dream and like if you can remember what happened or um yeah, because I, I think there's, there's t- times when I've really listened to just an idea that was planted and I've run with it and it's amazing things have happened. Um, and I wish that there was more quiet and stillness in people that they could hear that and then also have the confidence to go out and see what that meant, you know, and, and I love that you've done that. It's really cool. Thank you. Um, thanks for what you just said. I, uh, yeah, I'm not quite sure how to distill the process or the the experience. Um, it, it did was, take a while, right? It wasn't like you had was, a dream and you did it immediately. No, it, it came a really long time ago. It came over 20 years ago. So mm. I was, um, gosh, I, I didn't even know whether or not to pay attention to that strong of a message because I was, you know, so much younger. And even today, I don't know if I, if I was to, it, it feels like it was yesterday. It was so powerful. I remember I woke up out like a, like a lightning bolt and I just, I had this flash of an, of an image of a visual that and I didn't know exactly what it would look like or even how, obviously I had no idea what it meant, but it was such a powerful image of just this beautiful, comfortable sort of sacred space for you know us to be in to sort of quiet that noise, like you said, and, um, and, and really not about um, any kind of, it, and I knew very much that it had nothing to do with any kind of dogma or, or, you know, or religion or, and not to say that those, that religion doesn't have its place in society. I think um, in many ways, that's sort of how we learn how to talk to talk to source, talk to connect to self and in a proactive way. I just think that society has become very convoluted around politics and different systems. But I Mm. think the essence of the essence of that, you know, conversation is so pure and so Mm. necessary. It's just, we have all these languages that are all saying the same things and we're all feeling the same things. And, doesn't matter where you go on the planet we're all the same and it just was this realization of just you know it's not about any person or idea or it's about every person and every you know it's there it's each of our own so soma really in the root of soma in greek and latin means self Mm -hmm. and so when i was trying to figure out what would this be called what would this space you know be i i I realized it's really about the individual 
that's in it. And of course the dome is the space. And so, and when you look at the architecture of healing structures and you mentioned, you know, the space and stuff, I think it is important, like, because it, you know, every structure creates a different impact on the energy of our environment and how we not just relate to it aesthetically, but the, 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 um, the energy of how the universe carries it. And I know that sounds, but I think the truth is architecture and from everything from, in the pyramids to uh, the way that we've seen Stonehenge and different types of structures throughout time uh, evolve, you know, our, our relationship to energy and matter and mm. are recognizing that everything is energy and it's just in different, you know, different compacted in different ways. Um, so yeah, all of that, you know, being said, I, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, you know, I just, uh, it, it just it evolved, and it, so to speak to something that was some that was so ineffable or intangible or impossible to really even even in my mind's eye just begin to form. It took such a long time to just you know percolate. So I think I think all of us, like you said, we have these downloads or we get these flashes, and that we can't ignore them. Mm. And you know, and and it's like who knows what they're going to turn into, and who knows? And I'm sure that what you're doing is is and we're all just these sort of vessels i know it sounds cheesy but it's true and we're all sort of doing our part to actualize the intentions of sort of how do we put this fabric together of humanity and society and all of that and so yeah i mean so the space was just became clear i and i and i think i just after so long of fighting it, really fighting it, mm. um, um, resisting it, you know, realized that um, I had to do it. It was almost a resignation. So I don't know. It's not a. Was, there mm -hmm. was a, What was the cat like? Because it can't happen over a period, like 20 years, you said. What was that? OK, I have to do it. Did something happen or it was something going on in your life where you were like, now I'm doing it? I just couldn't keep doing what I was doing. You know, mm. I went to I did go. I went to law school and I went into social justice and got into criminal law and felt like I wasn't making the impact that I wanted to. And that I, you know, and the vision for this actually, instead of going away, it had just gotten stronger mm. and grown bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think there had just been enough years and honestly buckets of tears, just praying or believing or wanting or visualizing or writing about this, thinking about this and knowing I had to do it, but not, not ever actually just doing it. So mm. I just reached a tipping point of just, you know, if I don't just do this, then I probably shouldn't, you know, be here or something. I don't know. It's just, mm. it, it was just, a, it was, well, it was a realization. It was a, it was like, it was, it was almost like a, a realization or a resignation of like this deep sort of within myself, this kind of stepping into something that I knew I had to do. And right. instead of, so it was, yeah. It's like, I mean, we talk about this a lot and it comes up in these conversations and it comes up in the comments a lot with people. Um, just sort of, like you were saying, being stuck in a job, doing a job that just didn't feel right and not wanting to be in that anymore and then feeling that you had to follow this this calling and, and do this thing. Um, I do, I, I, I can connect with that wholeheartedly in that I feel really depressed and in a terrible mm. place when I feel like I'm getting up every day for no reason or like, or that the reason that I'm getting up for isn't fulfilling. Um, and I don't see the point in it. Um, and so I, I think, and I, and I get it, like it is, it can be so hard to take that leap of faith and try these new things. Um, and, and that's why I love speaking to people like yourself. And I, I talk about this all the time as a way of just encouraging people to kind of find the confidence and and work their way through it. I don't think you have to just give up everything, you know, quit your job and like, I don't know, sell everything. Or like, I don't think it has to be that extreme, but it's just those taking those steps of action towards mm -hmm. that thing and, and, mm -hmm. you know, facing, walking, leaning into that fear. Um, mm -hmm. You know, still to this day, there's so many things that I, you know, I'm hesitant about making content because of what people will think. I'm hesitant about fundraising and asking for money because of what people might think or not getting anywhere. And then it just being a failure. So I should just not do it in the first place. You know, all these like niggling doubts and fears that hold us back from creating this amazing stuff. And so, um, so yeah, I love that you you leaned into that and have, have created this hmm. fabulous um, 
space. And I'd love to hear, because um, I think on the website, there were some really great stories of how, how it's impacted people. Do you mind sharing yeah. just sort of some that really resonate to you of, you know, people that have used it and, and what they get from it? Um, first of all, that was so well said. I think that's so true. I think it, it doesn't have to be this all or nothing kind of like, you know, but I do think that, look, I mean, we're here and who knows for how long and mm -hmm. we all have these gifts and these, mm -hmm. you know, things that we've been given. And so if, if, if there's an inspiration or, or an idea or, or something, and, and what's the worst thing that could happen. And from, from my perspective, just to the worst thing that I realized could happen would just be that I would, it, it would, nothing could compare it to saying I never tried really was mm -hmm. where, what it came down to. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, so you know, gosh, um, it's we can, funny. We can roll with that a bit too. <laughs> like, yeah, right, 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 right. I mean, you know. <laughs> these are my favorite types of conversations. So, I, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> I know, in. right? No, no, I mean, that to me, that's like, that's it, you know? Mm. That's that's the, that, and it's like, oh, I mean, what are we here to do? I mean, it's just, it's like our life. And, um, you know, it's not always clear. It's not always easy. It's not always obvious there's not mm. always someone that's telling you but then it's i think and that's ironically the whole purpose behind the dome is to find that that quiet voice within that is sort of knows our truth and mm -hmm. our you know whether is is this really fear or is it just afraid of failure because afraid of failure is not really fear mm -hmm. <laughs> for any real reason like that's not that's nothing like there's nothing to that that should have any legs to stand on because like you just said, I mean, if you've got an inspiration for content and it's coming to you and you're feeling it, then, you know, who, yes, you have to want to resonate and things have to you know, be relevant. But, but at the end of the day, it's like be, you, you stand in sort of your inspiration, that's your truth. And, and if it leads you down a path that seems to be making like you're doing this beautiful, you know, platform, it's like, then, you know, you're standing, it's resonating and you just keep doing that. You just keep mm. doing that. And it's, mm. but it's not easy. It's not always easy or obvious. And that, yeah. And, and that's the thing. And, and some, my, some thing I struggle with a lot is wondering, am I scared of doing this or do I not want to do it? There's some things where I just know that, um, that this is how I feel good. This is where I want to be going. This feels right. I get it. And there's sometimes where I'm like, am I, am I putting it off? because I'm scared or am I putting it off because it, it doesn't feel right and again I think that's the importance of the listening and you think about just in our busy lives constantly on a device constantly watching um, a tv or on a computer screen or listening to music like I I I do like not many people just stop and have silence you know I'll be mm. getting ready in the morning and putting TED talks on or listening to audiobooks mm -hmm. or like in my car and like constantly trying to get somewhere and we never really just have that quiet space and you think this this god or source or intuition whatever it is whatever it is needs a little bit of quiet for you to hear it <laughs> and when we're so distracted by all of these things you you just can't um and so yeah having having a space is great and i struggle with just sitting down meditating i just i struggle with it and so that's what i loved about being in the soma dome is because you're in that thing and once you're in that thing okay i'm here doing that and <laughs> it is very easy just to focus on the tracks or the music or whatever so Brilliant. that that's so cool that's so well said I love that because that was the, exactly it it was just the space like that was the only thing that came to me and that's the only thing I feel like is the purpose behind it is to create the space cool because place. it's that's it you know it's like there, like you just said there has to be that designated you know this is this is my space this is my time this is it. you're making it about you know going within being quiet taking that time, making that space. And, and uh, it's so, you're so right. That's such a, that's such, I think that is the key. It's the space. Yeah. I will make a little video for it and send it to you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Oh my God, please. That would be amazing. That would be awesome. Episode. I would love yeah. that. Thank you. Um, yeah. So yeah, there was one story that I really liked um, about a girl in school that had like just got in a fight. I don't know if it was a school in South Central LA. It might've been, was it? Is there a summer dome in a school that you were there in South Central LA? Um, yeah, we did. The first pilot we did for Pods for Peace was, um, was a, uh, actually in a continuation school in Sacramento um, called American Legion. And it was through partnership with um, Dr. Oz with uh, his health corps Ooh. so that he has a nonprofit with schools across the country. And yeah, that was. 
yeah so it was about a girl that was just about to get in a fight or she was just having a fight or something like that and you'd had a pod in the school and she sort of ran in there for 20 minutes and came out completely just relaxed and not angry and just feeling better about the whole situation and and yeah like emotions and we're not really taught how to deal with emotions or process emotions and everything comes from such a reactive place which is never a good place to to respond from when you're just reacting out of anger and so yeah I, I thought that was just beautiful that it's giving angry teenagers peace <laughs> that's cool thanks for yeah no I mean there's it's you know we've we've had it like so we've been in we've we've been able to test it in so many diverse environments now and it's exciting because it seems to show a pretty universal um, impact. So, yeah. so, you know, we're looking at vets that are coming home with PTSD and, um, we, we, we have a partnership that we're forming, um, with UCLA to, to treat, um, anxiety and depression and sleep disorders. And, um, you know, but, but just having it in normal applications like a spa or, a, or an athletic environment or, at work, people are saying they're getting increased performance. They're more in the zone. They feel like their recoveries are better. They're more focused. Their memory is sharper. And I just, I think, and it's not so much about really the dome or what it's doing. It's about the person um, getting into alignment and, mm -hmm. it, you know, and just like, it's unbelievable what happens when you can quiet your mind for a few minutes. And then when mm -hmm. you combine that with actual science that gets you into delta or theta or gamma or you know or or, or beta and and then you couple that with an environmental um, cue like chromotherapy and led and colors and lights and different things that create um sort of they bathe you in you know healing spectrum of light and colors impact our mood and then you have an energy healing system which i do think is is powerful because it's working off of the earth's you know magnetic fields mm -hmm. um it does it helps it just helps us get into alignment and it's not i don't think there's anything you know magic around connecting to self just mm -hmm. getting back into alignment so mm -hmm. and it's amazing the impact with how much we're running around out of balance <laughs> Oh yeah. I'm just thinking of how amazing it would be to have one in every school or every office and that, you know, people take their normal 10, 15 minute break or whatever, and just spend most of the time on their phone, most of the time and just, or, and instead being able to go and do something like that and having access to that, I think would, oh my gosh. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. I think it'd be really, yeah. <laughs> have you thought I agree. of like, cause we were talking before when we spoke about like sort of your next steps and funding and all types of stuff. Um, like companies like Google about having them in an office, like have you reached out to come because they seem like, you know, Google have massage suites and stuff, you know? Yeah, we, we are just absolutely blown away and overwhelmed by the amount of market opportunity for this. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's sort of cross verticals from corporate to spas and hospitality to travel. Um, mm -hmm. And we've, we've been able to do pretty targeted pilots with different types of placements from corporate. We launched at Adobe's corporate headquarters and um, we're about to pilot with uh, Sky Miles clubs around the world. Um, and then we have several domes and different um, different environments. So we, mm. we so so we're we're also now growing on cruise ships with Canyon Ranch through a pilot pilot with um their resort in uh in Vegas. Um there's so many different applications and where we've sort of landed with our entry strategy is to see the opportunity in terms of um where we want to put domes tied more to the user as opposed to the the placement. Mm -hmm. And and the, the person who we want to use the soma dome is is every person is is there's no one that doesn't need to to check in and to get grounded and to react less and to sort of so we we want this to be a place of um sort of a sanctuary of wellness in in any kind of environment so we've and and that coupled with our um ability to now scale because we've mm. been limited around production mm. we're excited as just just now be entering the market at a much more rapid pace this year. So it's an exciting time for us. And yes, we do. We are in the process of, um, of growing and, and fundraising around that, you know, goal as we hope to grow more. I love so. it. The world definitely needs more of these things. And I, uh, I, yeah, absolutely loved it. 
Well, oh. thank you so much, Sarah. Um, there is an opportunity to experience a session in one of these. Um, you can sign up to win. The link to sign up is in the show notes um, of the podcast and in this video. So make sure that you that you go and check that out. There's locations in different countries that we've got that we can give you access to. So make sure that you um, kind of can get to one of those. Otherwise, it would be a shame if you can't get to it. Um, and uh, yeah, and then Sarah's offering one of those sessions. Um, yeah, where actually, that's a great point. How, how does it work with people who are curious? Just you go on the website and just add your location. It tells you all the local ones. Is that pretty much it? Um, yeah. So we have a, you know, sex, section on our website to find a dome and just based on your closest market, we were mostly in, uh, New York and California and Northern and Southern. And, uh, also in Vegas, we've got London, Moscow and Dubai and Vancouver. And we're sort of, we're growing in, um, at strategic flagships kind of across mm -hmm. the country right now. So just check Perfect. out our website if you're able. Yeah, go and check out the website. I'll add that to the show notes too. Sarah, this has been lovely talking to you. Thank you Thank so, you. so much. It's always, it's yeah, every time we've spoken, I've had a blast. Um, everyone, yay. I will be back tomorrow, I believe, with another interview. I've got them all lined up coming this week. So see you, everyone else, tomorrow at 10 a.m. Um, like I said, check out our Patreon. Check out our website for all the giveaways. There's so many things, cool things that we, we're giving away at the minute. So make sure you enter to win those. Um, and that's it for now have a fabulous rest of your day or evening wherever you are in the world thanks bye